the American Freedom Train. The most spectacular event celebrating America's bicentennial provided an exciting focal point for community celebrations across the length and breadth of America. All aboard America, here comes the Freedom Train. All aboard America, here comes the Freedom Train. For more than six million Americans, the train containing over 500 documents and objects from America's historic past was the personal and immediate expression of this nation's 200 years. The freedom trains are rolling down 200 years of track, 200 years of glory, never to turn back. The train is called America, your ticket is the dream that lit the torch of freedom for all the world to see. She left the station in Lexington in 1776 and rode to Philadelphia where the Liberty Bell was fixed. George Washington was the engineer. John Adams shoveled coal. Ben Franklin punched the tickets. Tom Jefferson added so. trail strengthened by her journey her light will never fail you and i will roll along and stoke the freedom fire for we stand tall americans all no honor can be higher all aboard america here comes the freedom train all aboard america here comes the freedom what was it like at the freedom train At Trackside, it was a colorful, festive occasion. Music playing, people everywhere, moving up the ramps and into the flag-draped entrance car. In a moment, we are invited to step forward and are conveyed ahead into a darkened interior. Through the window of a colonial print shop, we can see early newspapers, posters, and tools of the printer's trade. On the windowsill is an original manuscript of poor Richard's almanac. Down with the lamps to No taxation without representation. First, ye rebels. Give me liberty or give me death. Opposite the print shop are broadsides, illustrating the growing unrest in the colonies. Now, a replica of the lantern, which signaled the British route, is set before a scene of Boston Harbor. A collection of revolutionary arms emphasizes the nation's difficult beginnings. Suddenly, the environment changes to one of deep blue light, and under pinpoint spots, there, before the visitor, are original copies of the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Articles of Confederation, and the Bill of Rights. Be it resolved this day, June 11, 1776, that a committee composed of Mr. Jefferson, Mr. Franklin, Mr. Adams, Mr. Livingston, and Mr. Sherman shall prepare and submit to this Congress a declaration when in of the course of human events, hold these truths to be self-evident. March second, seventeen eighty-one. These articles of confederation being ratified, this body shall henceforth be known as the United States. We, in the people Congress of the United assembled. States, assembled in order to form a more perfect union. As the sound of America's justice, beginning fades, we seem to be moving against a flow of American pioneers. 
These projected images are in dramatic contrast to the brilliantly colored headdress, basketry, and quill work, which represent the original American. Sound reinforces the visual impact of this early conflict between old and new Americans and traces the immediate expansion of the young American nation. National growth and expanding borders are symbolized by an exciting display of such historic treaties as the Gadsden and Louisiana purchases. Another moment and we are peering into a full-size Apollo capsule, alive with telemetry. The thrust of Americans into space is further evidence that the instinct for exploration remains a vital part of the American experience. In the third exhibit car, we find an animated mosaic of the changes wrought upon this land in these 200 years. Farms have become great cities. Streams have been dammed. Great industry grown where handcrafts had prevailed. And even as we review this incredible physical evolution, planners and architects are looking into the future at underseas habitats, vertical cities, and even colonies in space. From this animated imagery, we enter a quiet space. Moving forward, we pass before the original handwritten copy of Emma Lazarus's famous poem. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp In the beside morning. the golden door. We saw the statue. My heart was full. In rapid succession, a number of Americans speak to us. Here, maybe here, a new beginning. My people walk across a new continents life. to come here. Home. In the fertile valleys and quiet forests of this land, for thousands of years, we were the only Americans. Now we are a minority. Not every American but we are still came here frightened American. and confused to face a life of bondage and despair. Many have suffered and many have died so that my child might truly be an American. Although the speaking it's figures are mannequins, they seem to be alive as their faces move and express their deep feelings about their contributions to this great nation. For nearly 500 years, we Hispanic Americans have made our home. Los Estados Unidos de las Americas, our culture rich and ancient. We share freely. More than a century ago, thousands of Chinese, numb with cold, laid the rails and ties that helped to bind this nation together. And when it was done, they raised their families as Americans. Others came from eastern lands, different people. In addition, same. each figure becomes a focal point for the display of artifacts and documents which reflect the myriad cultures of which America is comprised. Once more, we step from the belt, walk a few paces, and are conveyed forward. Here, in one great graphic environment, are the innovators. Inventors, their words, their faces, and the machines themselves. An original magneto telephone, an early typewriter, a voice writer, and other vital inventions are set amongst many patent models submitted to the patent office during the early 19th century. As the presentation comes to a conclusion, the display becomes more complex, incorporating aerodynamics, computer technology, and space engineering, all testimony to the American genius. I hear America singing, the very carols I hear. Those of mechanics, each one singing his as it should be, blithe and strong. Once again, the presentation changes pace dramatically as a new car is filled with the enormous variety of talents, craftsmanship, and interest with which Americans have been identified from the nation's beginning. His plank or beam. The mason singing his as he makes ready for work or leaves off work. The boatman singing what belongs to him in his boat. Here in projected image, artifact and graphic, 
are the draftsmen, architects, bakers, sculptors, military leaders, statesmen, wheelwrights. And here, too, are their products and personal memorabilia. Another change in mood, and we are confronted with a sports-loving American, both participant and fan. Here is Babe Ruth's bat, Hank Aaron's bat, the Heisman Trophy, Billie Jean's tennis racket, Joe Frazier's robe, and Bob Lanier's incredible size 20 sneaker. Here, too, on film and videotape, are great moments from America's sports history. From the world of sports, we are conveyed into a world of entertainment. Hollywood, synonymous with the American creative spirit. The great silent stars, the classic comedians, the song and dance people. Broadway, radio, and finally television. Here are the stars surrounded by items from their professional triumphs and private lives. Another facet of the creative American spirit is the subject of car number nine. Here in an elegant gallery is a representative show of American art and sculpture. From famous revolutionary portraiture to contemporary non-objective painting, Americans have explored many media and techniques. In each segment of the program, a special characteristic of the American experience has been explored. Together, those images have woven a fabric from which has been fashioned a culture unique in the history of the world. There have been moments, however, in which that fabric seems strained to the breaking. Five of those moments and their vast implications are captured in dramatic vignettes within the last of the exhibit cars. Here is the box at Ford's Theater, complete with personal memorabilia, which speak to the character and integrity of this famous American president at a moment in time when Americans were engaged in a bloody internal conflict. Some generation, much is given. Of other generation, much is expected. This generation of Americans has a rendezvous with destiny. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America... No less a moment of vital decision was the presidency of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you Ask what you can do for your country. As was that electric moment when President Kennedy was shot. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. Yes. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day yes. this nation will rise up live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will they be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream. Senseless killing followed senseless killing and another great American was taken from us. Again, images and artifacts of the man and his time are captured by the presentation. Mr. Vice President, are you prepared to take the oath of office as President of the United States? I am, sir. If you will raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Gerald R. Ford, do solemnly swear 
I, Gerald R. Ford, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully execute that I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States the office of President of the United States and will, to the best of my ability and will, to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States the Constitution of the United States So help me God So help me God Congratulations, Mr. President our Constitution works. Our great republic is a government of laws and not of men. Here, the people rule. The President reminds us that our Constitution indeed works. And that document, one of the first artifacts viewed by the visitor early in the program, is fittingly the subject of this final thought. The idea is obvious. We have our problems. In some areas, we've made enormous progress. In others, there is yet much to accomplish. But regardless of one's perspective on the success or failure of social, political, or economic programs, it must be said that this past 200 years has been remarkable, and that the American spirit is truly unique. And that same blending of strength, purpose, and determination is no better symbolized than by the great steam-powered salute to America's 200th birthday. The American Freedom Train. Now, let us celebrate America, its heritage and its strength, and together build a meaningful tomorrow. called America. Your ticket is the dream that lit the torch of freedom for all the world to see. She left the station in Lexington in 1776 and rode to Philadelphia where the Liberty Bell was fixed. George Washington was the engineer. John Adams shoveled coal. Ben Franklin punched the tickets. Tom Jefferson added soul. All aboard America, here comes the freedom train. All aboard America, here comes the freedom train. She rolled to old New Orleans for the Battle of 1812. With old Hickory at the throttle, she drove the British out. That freedom train's a fine train, the best the world has seen. Her whistle blows for liberty, democracy is the steam. Wheels forged in sweaty Pittsburgh rolled across the Mississippi. From Texas to Missouri, a new exciting trip. Then bang, the track was broken, smashed by a cannonball. Blue and gray divided, will the nation stand or fall? All aboard America, here comes the freedom train. All aboard America, here comes. Abe stepped in the cab and the wheels begin to roll. The freedom train must never stop, the republic never fold. Through the bloody fields of Gettysburg, the tears shone in his eyes. As he drove the train with fury, freedom did survive. Once again the train rode west to California's golden shore. Through the desert and the prairie, much stronger than before. From Atlantic to Pacific, she rolled the rails with pride and traveled the tracks to glory, that good old American kind. All aboard America, here comes the freedom. 
freedom train. All aboard America, here comes the freedom train. There's much more to this story. There's Wilson and Roosevelt who passed the torch to Truman. The flame did not go out of Dwight D. Eisenhower and LBJ we sing two brothers known as Kennedy and Martin Luther King. Still the train rolls forward over history's rugged trail. Strengthened by her journey, her light will never fail. You and I will roll along and stoke the freedom fire for we stand tall, Americans all, no honor can be higher. All aboard America, here comes the freedom train.